So Sinister and Zero just hit a massive achievement. Now, a couple of videos ago, I talked about Wuthering Waves and their overall success, especially whenever it comes to reaching out to new platforms. I talked about GeForce Now and how it's going to really help them out whenever getting people who have some not so good devices to play the game. And also it coming to PlayStation 5 as well, which is a massive, massive thing because obviously there's a ton of people that own consoles. It'll just broaden their player base overall. But in this video, we're going to be talking about Zelda Zone Zero and their success with PlayStation as they've actually reached a massive, massive achievement, which I didn't think I'd see from a gadget game in a while. But it's happened. Now, before I get into this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy it. And also go over to Gamer Subs and use my code Kaza. They've got a ton of events going on at the moment. So if you want to go buy one of their cubs or maybe even a tub, they've got a ton of really nice flavors to choose from. I definitely recommend having a browse and use my code for 10% off. The link will be down below. And yeah, let's just get back into the video. So this is an article from The Gamer. They are a gaming news site and they say that Zelda Zone Zero is one of the most played games on PlayStation, which is absolutely insane. Obviously, Zelda Zone Zero hasn't even been out for a month yet. I mean, we've got just more than a week until we reach one month of the game being out, but it's already one of the most played games on PlayStation. So this might be to the help of it being released. Obviously, you know, any game being released, any game having a big update will boost the player number and it will probably go down over time. But again, it's still really cool to see this. And obviously, we haven't seen this with Wuthering Ways because the game isn't even out on PlayStation yet. What it says down here is that Zelda Zone Zero was the 10th most played game on PlayStation last week. But then saying Zelda Zone Zero is still a hit as it makes it onto the list of the most played games on PlayStation. Looking at the figures from last week, it secured the 10th place spot for most popular games on the platform alongside big hitters like Elden Ring, Minecraft and more. Obviously, these are some massive games and they said that the top 10 also includes Call of Duty, Fortnite and GTA 5 which again is absolutely amazing that you can actually like keep up with a lot of these big games because this is a gacha game that we're talking about this isn't like some big game like Elden Ring some big game like GTA 5 whatever the other games in this top 10 list this is a gacha game that honestly doesn't even have that much content I'll be real Zelda Zone Zero hasn't had the most of content and obviously it was said that by the devs in an interview that they did that there just wouldn't be as much content as maybe Genshin Impact or Honkai Starro and that was a good thing because it lets you go outside and actually do something else for a bit but it's still being this high on PlayStation is actually amazing and I think that's definitely where Hoyoverse has the one up on Wuthering Waves because they have these kind of contacts with PlayStation obviously as I said, Wuthering Waves isn't out on PlayStation yet, although they are working on it. But Hoyaverse has already had that relationship with PlayStation and Sony with Genshin Impact and Honkai Starro to bring it to PlayStation. And whenever Zelda Zone Zero released, they managed to bring it out on PlayStation at the same time, which is just amazing, bringing up a lot of their revenue. And that's probably why a lot of their revenue is much higher at the moment, because a lot of PlayStation players can play this game and it's free. Because I mentioned this in the last PlayStation video is that a lot of people that play PlayStation games like to go through the free game that are there they like to you know browse the store see what's free see what they can get for like no money and Zelda Zone Zero will be one of them and it'll probably be one of the highest search results just because of its popularity meaning that we're gonna have a ton more players coming over even if they aren't necessarily gacha players they are just random PlayStation players who just enjoy the game and honestly that's great and that's what I'm hoping we'll see with Rothering Waves as well but it's definitely proved that as Zelda Zone Zero is the 10th most played game on PlayStation last week and we can see from this tweet here that they actually linked Number one was Call of Duty, of course. Then we got Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto, The First Descendant, which was a new game that came out. That was actually a really, really good game. NBA 2K24, Roblox, Madden NFL 24, Elden Ring, Minecraft, and then Zelda Zone Zero. So again, super, super good for Zelda Zone Zero. I mean, you know, keeping up with a lot of these massive games that have just come out. And it's just exciting to see a lot of people talking about this. That seems like the gamer have made a few past articles on Zelda Zone Zero. But again, we never really saw anything this big with a lot of other gacha games. Obviously Genshin Impact and Honkai Star were the exception. They were pretty big games, so people talked about it a lot. But Zelda Zone Zero and even Wuthering Waves have been talked about a ton, especially whenever it comes to news articles and just overall internet news. It seems like a game that's actually involved with the community and not just another gacha game that people kind of like separate into a different category because, you know, it's a rather like niche audience. Zelda Zone Zero, they tried to make it as accessible as possible for people. And I think that's what Hoyaverse have really like gone for here is that anybody can play this game whether you know you're the most experienced gacha player out there that loves gacha games or you're someone that's never actually tried it before and obviously as i said earlier in this video playstation really helps with that because there's tons of people that don't actually play gacha games that play playstation and will see this game give it a try and maybe even like it and get into even more of their games which again is probably what hoyoverse are thinking because this has been a big topic since Zelda Zone zero has come out is that hoyoverse are trying to make their own kind of like environment for a lot of gacha games obviously we've got genshin impact which is an open world kind of game where you go around you know 
collecting stuff, fighting things. Then we got Honkai Star, which is a turn-based game. And now we've got Zenosome Zero, which is some kind of like small like fighting game. Obviously, there isn't a very like big open world aspect to it. It's like kind of enclosed. And all of these games are very different and it allows you to just like play one game after another and just stay in Hoya versus Circle and spend money on Hoya versus games rather than go out to other companies and other games that aren't made by Hoyaverse. And I think that's exactly what they're trying to do, especially with a lot of the news coming from their new Animal Crossing type game. They're really trying to hit every single genre they can so that they can actually build this environment of just Hoyaverse games that you can play that have every single genre that you could ever possibly want. Now, obviously, some people argue that this is a bad thing, you know, because it means that Hoyaverse has a massive monopoly over the gacha market and that there's going to be so many more people that play Hoyaverse games over other gacha games that may be smaller and are struggling. But I think Wuthering Waves is a good example of how another company can actually come in and, you know, challenge Hoyaverse and actually, you know, compete with it in terms of revenue, even if they've only released one or two like big games in the past. But then there's also some people that think, you know, Hoyaverse having all of these games is a great thing too, because it means that they can play more of what they like in different genres, which again, I can understand too. I mean, some some people made like an Animal Crossing kind of game over Zenless Zone Zero, over Genshin Impact, over Honkai Star Rail, meaning that they could be like, finally, this is a game that I can get into. So I guess that is also a pretty good thing. But further on in this article, they say with Zenless Zone Zero now making it to top 10, it's clear that the game's growth hasn't stagnated yet. We'll have to see if it can cling on to its place this time next week. But given that it's only grown since launching earlier this month, its chances are looking pretty good. Now, I don't think this is true. I think this is a very like false thing to say about Zenosun Zero. They're going through a little bit of a dead time. Obviously, you know, Wuthering Waves had that earlier before Chang Li released. And although they do have an update coming in August, they don't really have much content for people to do. So I definitely think that it won't be as high as it was last week because there's just less to do and people have already completed a lot of the stuff that they brought out on release. But again, not to say that that's a bad thing. Honestly, that's a good thing. It means that again, like the dev said, they can go out and do other things or go and play other games like Genshin Impact, like Honkai Star Rail. It's all cleverly designed to make you keep playing their games. But again, obviously some people will go over to Wuthering Waves and stuff that aren't their games as well. And then they go on to say, as we covered earlier today, Zelda Zone Zero certainly isn't hurting for players, but many of those players are still struggling to reach high levels according to the achievement stat. Less than 1% of the players have reached level 60, even with the game letting you spend real life money to speed up the process. Of course, this doesn't mean money isn't being spent on the game, just that players are likely spreading this out across their party, not a single character. So again, yeah, there is a little bit of an issue whenever it comes to leveling up and reaching level 60. But to be honest, I think that'll be fixed, especially with a new update coming out very soon. Obviously, people are going to catch up way quicker. And obviously, the game hasn't even been out for that long. And, you know, some people are in a rush to get to level 60, but some people are like me. I don't really care. And I think a lot of other people don't care either about reaching level 60. And we'll just get there at some point. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the article. I mean, it's very, very good that Zelda Zone Zero is one of the most played games on PlayStation. Again, as I said, it's really good for Hoyaverse and their overall revenue. And maybe we'll see it go back up to that spot whenever they release their new update. But yeah, just let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Do you think the Zelda Zone Zero deserves to be one of the most played games on PlayStation? Or do you think maybe it should belong to someone else? And that Zelda Zone Zero really hasn't been that great of a game. But honestly, I think they deserve it. And Hoyaverse has put in a lot of effort whenever it comes to, you know, advertising this game and just making it good for everyone and i'm just super excited to see what happens next but that's all i've got for this video if you did enjoy it then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and obviously go over to gamers Hubs, as i said use my code kaza where you can get yourself 10 percent off pretty much everything so again definitely go check it out and i will see you guys in the next one that's all see ya